Hello and welcome. I'm Charlie Anarkan, Vice President of Manufacturing at Microsoft. Today, we're talking about one of the most important advances in technology that will impact manufacturing tremendously, artificial intelligence. AI is a significant disruptor and can be anything depending on who's driving it. Huge opportunity, but also a major issue for various reasons. At Microsoft, we're committed to the advancing AI through ethical principles that put people first. We have a call to action to work with governments, policymakers, businesses, industry working groups, and academic researchers to ensure that together we're developing a regulated, trustworthy AI for all. Through Microsoft's Responsible AI program, we're helping organizations put sound AI principles in place from strategy to implementation to governance with practices, tools, and technologies. And we are empowering those working to address society's greatest challenges through our AI for Good initiative. Responsible AI is a great enabler for uh, what I call the art of possible. It is creating visionary opportunities that are transforming businesses, modernizing industries, and empowering economies. Gurdi Paul, my guest today, is the mastermind behind Microsoft's business AI and autonomous systems strategy. Since 1990, he has been leading Microsoft's work in critical strategy areas, including networking, real-time communication, search, Bing Maps, Skype for Business, and the list goes on and on and on. He also co-authored the industry's first VPN. His resume is truly impressive, and I'm very, very grateful that he is here to talk with us today about the future of AI and autonomous systems in particular. Gurdip, welcome, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Chalyan. It's really my, my honor to be talking to you. Honor is all mine. And Gurdip, 31 years at Microsoft. Wow. Career, your career is just remarkable, truly remarkable. Can you tell us more about the projects and businesses you have launched and how that led all of those led you to AI? It's very interesting, Chalyan. I was in fact talking to to Satya like a few few months ago, and uh, you know, sorry, it was in the context of the COVID world that we live in, and I and I and I it was noting to him that I feel like my entire career at Microsoft was just preparing the world for COVID, um, and you know, my first decade in the company was working on networking. Um, and this was a time when, you know, I was part of the Windows NT team and, uh, you know, the TCP IP was not yet uh, launched. Uh, and we, you know, uh, Henry Sanders uh, and myself and a few other people, we actually built the first complete TCP IP stack, both for networks and for uh, remote communications, which is over initially dialing over modems. But during while doing that work, we ended up doing uh, building VPNs. Uh, I co-authored the first VPN in the world, which I was looking up even today, PPTP and LTTP are still the most used VPNs in the world. And, uh, you know, today with COVID, uh, you know, we, it's hard to do work without VPNs. Um, and then I moved on to communications. Um, this was in the next decade. Um, uh, Bill was very, very excited about real-time communications and how, uh, you know, we could really bring them into this sort of uh, world of the internet. And uh, so I started the communications business at Microsoft. You know, this went from Link, Skype for Business, and now Teams. And now that has become you know, the world cannot work, work without real-time communications. And, uh, and then uh, I started working on AI uh, earlier in this decade, and then I went off to do other things and came back to AI. And now with autonomous systems in particular, you know, the world will need autonomous systems to keep for so things continue to happen while, you know, things like COVID hit us and the world sort of grinds to a halt. So, I've been very fortunate. I mean, it's only at Microsoft that I had could have had this opportunity to participate in these key technologies. Uh, so I am, you know, I'm like the luckiest, uh, you know, uh, you know, kid in the candy store here. So that's that's my brief story. Well, I will um, I will say that the candy store has so is is so lucky to have you, Gurdeep. Because you're not participating only, you're actually leading the wave and actually making history as you go along. The things that you mentioned and the things that you're working on right now is nothing short of historicals. I called your career remarkable. I don't think that word 
properly describes it, but I'll find other words um, as, as we go along, as, as we partner. And so AI is obviously, it's a, it's a, major, it's a very broad topic from, uh, that will impact our personal lives, professional lives, all businesses and whatnot. Um, you talked about autonomous systems and that's, that's part of your focus now. It is what pulled you uh, specifically into autonomous systems, Gurdip? Yeah, so you know, my charter um, at Microsoft for the last four over four years has been uh, looking at emergent AI technologies and seeing how we can solve new kind of business problems with it. And and so this is the remit that you know Satya, you know I and, and when we set up this group, uh, we we sort of put in place. So in some ways, I've had the uh, sort of benefit of looking at the entire gamut of the AI stack and worked on many different parts of it. Um, and uh, this was an area I I started focusing on because we realized like we didn't have enough attention on this space in the company. And, and Satya was increasingly thinking about, you know, some of the scenarios which are very, of course, popular, like autonomous driving and, um, and saying, you know, what is Microsoft's play in this space? Now, obviously, you know, we are not in the business of building cars. You know, we are not in the build business of building machines. So what is it that we are, you know, how do we participate in this? So it was with this sort of an idea started focusing on autonomous systems. And, you know, um, I'll tell you, Microsoft, um, you know, we are about software. So anything we primarily do, software has to be the big hammer that you can actually swing at it. Another way to say it is that you have to define whatever problem there is in a way that it works to our strengths and sort of looks more like a software problem. So that lens, we started thinking about what is the hardest problem in autonomous systems? And how do we solve it with a much more of a software bend? That is how uh, you know we started focusing on autonomous systems and a particular unique point of view uh, in the industry on 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 this in this particular space. Manufacturing is coming from kind of everything being manual, everything being with people on the shop floor, data not really used. Suddenly, pandemic happens, huge disruption. And now I'm seeing a lot of appetite for like, how do I ensure business continuity? How do I do um, remote operations? How do I protect my people, but still be able to resume my, uh, my manufacturing? So obviously autonomous systems will make a tremendous impact and you and I are working on it together. Uh, industrial control solutions becoming more adaptive, right? Um, um, to, to changing uh, environments, um, dealing with complex processes now for the first time ever in, I think, in history of humankind, the, the kind of problems that we can optimize uh, for or work on is just uh, is just unprecedented. And combining human and machine intelligence, again, that that uh, really have not happened. You, I think you said it best, Gurdip, you said the potential to help our customers innovate with this technology and bridge the divide between the physical and the digital world is limitless and that's we're taking that to heart when we talk about lights out manufacturing or autonomous supply chains, et cetera. So can you share some of the specific scenarios, Gurdip, that you and your team have been working on? And, um, and through that, what has surprised you the most in terms of AI's impact on um, real world problems? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, as you know, you know, with AI, um, um, the the reason we've seen this big, uh, uh, you know, all these developments in AI is because there was a very important step that happened before it, which was digitization. That means data was suddenly available in a digitized form. And once the data is available, you can then make sense of it. Now, the classical approaches in AI, you know, I'm actually including supervised learning as classical now, even though it is uh, fairly modern, but it, those approaches say, well, if you give me the data, uh, we can actually make sense of it with these incredible deep learning approaches. Um, the challenge is that there are many scenarios and manufacturing is probably a perfect example of that, where it is nearly impossible to capture all the data. And if you cannot capture all the data, you cannot address some of the problems that are, I would say, the harder problems. You can do certain things. So, you know, you can prevent the maintenance and there's a lot of good high value stuff. But when you really get into the more advanced things like control, um, 
how do you go about doing that? And this is where the autonomous systems and reinforcement learning in particular has sort of come about where you can start reasoning outside of the data that you have. And that means you can now develop models of the world which have an understanding of the world, and now you're reasoning with it. And that is what humans do. That's why human experts are the ones that are able to do these advanced tasks, which you know robots you know can't do. We can't even drive the car, you know, without uh, with, with, with high confidence right now. So, so humans do that, you know, very very easily. So the with that lens, you know, it really opens up a whole new set of scenarios and opportunities. Like for example, uh, one of the interesting ones was, uh, you know, I'd like to talk about uh, is in the area of uh, chemical process control. And this is a really hard problem. I mean, this is where, uh, you know, you can digitize it up to a point, but these are analog systems. I mean, these are atoms and atoms which, which are behaving very, very differently as they progress in time and they progress in the different conditions that are there. And you're supposed to produce predictably without much uh, you know, loss. Uh, you're able to, you have to produce this high grade polymer. And this was a problem we, nobody you know, could really solve. So we just said, okay, well, the human experts who've been trained for like tens of years are the ones who are able to literally draw upon their instincts and draw upon their experience and stuff and, and then adjust things and move them along. This was like one of those things where we, we were blown away by the results that how with reinforcement learning you can go transform. And that is like on one side. And then there's some things which you would think are fairly straightforward. Um, recently, you saw the, the tweet by the CEO of PepsiCo uh, on Cheetos manufacturing. And I mean, it is, it's amazing, like the amount of uh, messages I've gotten from people and people reaching out, um, because nobody thought that, hey, you know, people thought, hey, Cheetos is a solved problem. <laughs> and of course, everybody in the world is eating Cheetos, so we can manufacture it easily. But when we started working with PepsiCo and, and you know, their engineers, uh, we found that it was actually a pretty hard problem and they really had to rely on experts, you know, controlling a lot of things and they still had, you know, reasonable amount of wastage uh, if they did not meet the quality control. Here again, we were able to use reinforcement learning to create a policy which can operate all these different knobs and can produce perfect Cheetos. So, you know, the range is, is actually amazing. You don't have to have wheels or wings or arms to really bring autonomous systems to bear. It's everything, all manufacturing is sort of in scope. Yeah, I mean, from AI to autonomous systems, from that to, I will call both of your examples, and it, it was not only us being blown away, the customers were like, you know, I remember both of those, uh, you know, talking to them. Um, the, your, those two examples are bringing it down to recipe-driven scenarios, right, or use cases. And then just on that same note, you're also looking at pharmaceuticals and so many other uh, applications or implications. It's just, it's just fascinating. I think we're, we're all very, very lucky to be doing what we're doing in this historical kind of period in, uh, in, um, in, our, in our world. Um, so um, autonomous systems, Lighthouse manufacturing, completely new health and safety scenarios, you know, informed by the pandemic. Um, lots of knowledge, lots of data, little knowledge, but how do we, how do we uh, go from um, uh, optimizing the parts to being able to now globally optimize the entire system? Um, and so um, it is, so AI is the opportunity here. So, so we, 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 we definitely uh, agree on that. So. You and I, again, we have the fortune of kind of working on it together, but how do people get started, Gurdeep? So what do you recommend in terms of the first steps or how do we, uh, how, how, how do our customers or, or, and our communities look at this and just say, you know, this is the first step that I might consider? Yeah, I think first step is really to familiarize with this approach. I mean, this is like a new, uh, a, a totally new, you know, tool in your toolkit. And, and it is completely new. It's never, like, the world has never seen it. 
so there is certainly a level of familiarity and education that must happen uh, on that because that becomes a necessary step before you can start trying it out and i would say the best is familiarize yourself then you pick a easy problem that or, or, or sorry pick a problem that is uh, it, it's it's hard in the domain that you know engineers are working in but it is not something which is mainstream that you know it can immediately be applied and try it out using the tool chain that we have. Because we've built a tool chain for creating brains for autonomous systems. So you can take any problem. And you know, our, our, of course, the classical example in robotics is the inverted cart, inverted pendulum, which is a cart pole, and you know, you have to balance the stick. And you know, we we actually have a um, you can go online, you can sign up for this little training thing, and we will actually enable set you up so that uh, you can go in and either look at the brain that exists or you can start building your own brain for controlling this in inverted pendulum. Now, anybody who's in this world of mechanical engineering, et cetera, understands this problem. There are the classical approaches and now see how we solve that with reinforcement learning. We've actually built a, um, a little robot um, called Project Moab, which you may have heard about. It's a it's a little disc which with three motors on it, and it's to balance a, a ping pong ball. Now you can actually balance this using classical control, which mechanical engineers are very familiar with, like PID control and so on. Except we can now we said now let's challenge this and say um, let's put an egg on there and see if you can balance it. Now the PID control starts to fail. Um, then you can even raise it much further. So let's make the ping pong ball go around around the rim of this plate, this glass plate. You know, you cannot do that with classical controls. You have to use reinforcement learning. So, um, you know, just a few steps to familiarize yourself and think, and then you take one hard problem that you're dealing with, which can, has not been solved so far, but it can be failed, it's bounded. You put that in place and you try this approach out. We are uh, increasingly making these tools uh, and uh, you know available so that people can try things out on their own. And at the moment, they are willing to engage. We are having an increasing partner ecosystem now. They can actually work with 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 the customer in building these things out and then deploy them. Um, you know, aka.ms/as, which is for autonomous systems, is really the place where we have a lot of this information, so customers can go to that. Yeah, with all this change, Gurdi, one thing that does not change is that Microsoft be democratized technology. So what we're talking about here is we're going to democratize AI and autonomous systems, make it accessible to everyone, make it easy to uh, to benefit from, and and offer it to uh, to people, to institutions, to businesses, and partner with them. And the other thing that's very important that you said is we're bringing the partner ecosystem along so that we can unleash that entire potential, which is astounding. I'm very, very energized, uh, to say the least, um, and, uh, and apply it to, we didn't even discuss sustainability or carbon or water, um, and, and obviously this, it, the, uh, the implications or applications are just uh, infinite. So I'm very excited to partner with you. I'm very excited by the opportunity ahead of us. Um, any parting thoughts for us, Gurdip, that you want to leave us with? Yeah, I think you know there are a couple of things I would say. Uh, the first thing I would say is that you know, uh, as you said, we're trying to democratize uh, this technology, and we're doing it in a way that we don't want our customers to become experts of reinforcement learning. We are creating these abstractions. We have a low-code, no-code approach on how these experts in their fields can use AI without becoming an expert in AI. And that is a really important piece of this overall equation. The second thing I would say is that we need to really get prepared for a world of ubiquitous world of autonomous systems. Uh, you know, in the same way, there was a time when we were looking forward to when there were going to be a billion PCs, and then you know there were going to be a billion mobile phones, and now it seems there'll be a, a billion smart speakers. We are rapidly coming up to a place there's going to be a billion autonomous systems, and. You know, I want our customers to be leading that, uh, to be succeeding with it, um, and by adopting these tools, I believe they can get there. And we're here to help. 
and, and partner with them. So that's that's brilliant. Uh, Gurdjieff, thank you so much for joining us um, here today. I think we're just starting uh, this this dialogue with uh, with our communities and customers, and I'm just truly excited by uh, by what's ahead of us. Thank you, Chalyan. It's so great to partner with you on this, and uh, really looking forward to again changing the world. Thank you.